welcome to the Rockwall Denmark Sail Grand Prix. Coming from their first podium finish in Plymouth, the Danish are going to be looking to make yet another final. Well, indeed. And to me, it's really interesting to see how Nikolai has reacted to their first podium last month. The first thing he's done here at Copenhagen has been to invite Formula One driver Kevin Magnussen. Now, we've seen this before, how teams look for inspiration from the outside, and Nikolai may be finding the extra 1% here with Kevin. His first expression was, wow, this is amazing. This feels faster than doing 380 on land. It's a lot of communication in a Formula 1 team, but here the reaction from the whole team has got to be so quick. Whereas in a Formula 1 race, as a driver, of course, you need the reactions. But I don't need to talk to anyone to react. I can just go for it. Whereas these guys, everyone has to be on board in every little movement. One thing he mentioned that I thought a lot about was that he was blown away of the teamwork we have, the communication, how much we rely on each other. If I make one mistake, I'm really going to hurt someone on the boat. They put their life in my hands. Equally, I put my life in the hands of Tom and Rasmus and Hans and everyone. That was something I didn't think of before he mentioned it, that we really, really go to work every day with our lives in each other's hands and, and we just trust that every single one of us would do the right thing at the right time with the right instinct. Final day here in Copenhagen. Last year, the Danish were the most questioned team of the whole fleet. Round the world yachtsmen racing in a small fleet. Not enough experience on the F50, but they've had a plan and nobody saw it coming. As a Danish team, we are lacking a bit of experience in the F50, but we have other benefits. We have experience in, in running successful corporations. We have experience in running processes, building successful teams. For the outside world, uh, it's all about performance. For us, it's not. It's about the process. So this and this, Nikolai takes it really directly. And these areas, he maybe only makes a check every second week. And what I see now is maturing into being able to get out of the distractions and put more and more into the raw performance of sailing the boat fast and also keeping the sailing simple around the track. End of race two and the Danish finish second. Very consistent racing from Nikolai Sehested and his crew. I think exactly the point is to link the sailing to the person. I don't believe you should have a super industrial protocol for how you sailed around the course. You should link the sailing back to Nikolai's core and his emotions and his instinct. Race three and the Danish seal the deal. They've made it into their second final. They'll now have to fight against the French and the team of the moment, the New Zealand Sail GP team. Well, what a feat. Qualifying for the final here in front of your home crowd. It has to feel great for Nikolai and those who found him in the first place. This is a little bit like finding the unique fighter pilot inside a person. My father was a fighter pilot. I, I know a little bit uh, what to look for. The mix between the highly structured German approach, but then on top you need that art. The last bit needs to be instinct, talent, personality, emotions. That, that's the winner. Final seconds for the final to start, and Denmark and New Zealand are in a real street fight at the back. He's got to keep clear the Danish boat. New Zealand have control. Aggressive maneuver by the New Zealand crew. The wind is blowing from the camera. This boat and this boat are going this way. This boat here, the Danish team, it's the windward boat. Kiwi's boat here is further away from where the wind's blowing, so it is the leeward boat. Now the Kiwi's boat here has all the power, and they can take Denmark closer to the wind. The closer you go to the wind, the more you slow down. In an F50, we know you don't want to slow down, especially before a start. Wow, look at the Kiwi's farm. I wasn't prepared or expecting New Zealand to come hard for us. It was like they didn't care about France. Burling's destroyed the start for the Danish. It's all about your timing. It's going to be a drag race between France and New Zealand for control at mark number one. Oh! This is very tight. It's anyone's race at the moment, but the Danish are third. Nikolai has to pull a rabbit out of the hat from here. As they're heading towards the gate, the Danish team, they're in last. And in a final like this, you can put all on black. You can go the opposite way to the other boats because you have nothing to lose. And that's what the Danish team did. Nikolai has that killer instinct. 
it pops up once in a while and you can really feel like when standing behind him, he just takes some decisions and you just know that was the right call. Whoa, Nikolai is deciding to turn left. It's an all or nothing move. He's hunting for a new pressure on the left. The Kiwis and the French believe the strongest wins on the right. It's a big gamble by Nikolai. Now, is it going to work out? We have a beautiful shift. Beautiful shift and win. You can bear off. And as they turn, they get this beautiful wind. They catch up to the other boats, and then the race just restarts from there. This looks really good for the Danes. They're closing the gap, neck and neck. They're going to do it. Oh my, yes, they've oh, done it. They got it. The Danes are leading the final in their home Grand Prix. What a move. Absolutely outstanding racing by Nikolai Sehested. Well, the Danish are leading, but the French have the right away in this next turn, so Nikolai will have to fall behind. Oh, the Danes lose their lead. Still, the race remains a hair's width. Come on, Nikolai, come on. So the French team and the Danish team are approaching the mark at the same time. The Danish team just have a little bit more speed, and they're trying to get in front of the French team. They've both got to turn around the mark. But the way the rules of sailing work is the boat closest to the mark has rights to round the mark how they want. So Quinton decided he was going to sail them in the wrong direction, slow them down, make sure that they couldn't overtake him. And as soon as they were slow enough, he was happy to just build his speed and he basically put them away in a really technical and tactical fashion. Any fight back in the pack is great news for Burling. The two boats behind are slowing each other down. New Zealand get to stretch away. I got so frustrated when France was pushing us out because it felt like they didn't care about New Zealand. They didn't have the faith to go and win the race. They felt like they were defending second. We need to catch New Zealand. Why are you suddenly giving them such a big lead by fighting us for second? Like, who cares about second? We're here to win. Disaster for the Danes. They're off the foils, one hull in the water. This is not looking good at all for the home team. Wow, we are down. Nice move, my friends. The Kiwis have got this one in the bag. Last leg before the finish line. But the Danes have one more opportunity here to fight for second. The French team pretty much have it in the bag, but the Danish team, they're pushing super hard. They're trying to get every little opportunity they can. Fighting a bit more here. High mode. Uh, cancel straight in. I still had a lot of frustrations to France from what they did previous in the race to let New Zealand get away. We really want to catch them here and really hurt them from what they did earlier. I was just telling to the boys, like, just keep flying high and keep the boat up to speed because we have to defend this position. The Danes need to catch up. They're pushing far too hard. The boat's not going to hold this much pressure. If you don't take the risk, you won't get them anyways. And if you take the risk and it doesn't work out, it's still a third place. And they do a massive wheelie and crash into the water and the French just sail past them. Hang on. What are they? Woo! Yeah, it's a bit of a high risk move. I was only shot of getting them. It's okay. It's when Rockwell came to sail GP, they could have taken a foreign driver, but they made a bet. And of course, when you do that, there are doubters and everyone has an opinion on whether you've done the right thing or not. The more you get questioned, the more you have to believe. Nikolai has shown that he is growing as a sailor, but also as a leader. I'll tell you what, you're doing great, mate. Like, frickin' impressive. Way better, I gotta repeat my words, way better than I thought, you know, that, oh, that you've been in touch. But seriously, impressive. There's people that get tired and walk away, and there's people that keep on fighting because they have this fire in them to prove that they want to be the best. And you talk to Nikolai and he's like, yeah, I'm happy that we made the podium, but this is a long game and I'm here to win. The difference between a winning and a losing team is how you control your emotions and your instincts and your energy. The emotions put you in the right mindset of risk versus reward. Can I stay cool? Can I make the right decision when, when I'm really being questioned? First of all, Nikolai is incredibly talented. You have just seen the beginning of what he can do in that boat. You're going to see a lot more. 
and it's just going to keep getting better. We really evolved and learned the most in the hard times, and we've been very fortunate to have a hard time to begin with as a team. As long as you can handle it, then you come out better on the other side. That's sort of, I think, the defining moments.